Okay, hi guys. Um, sorry in advance for the audio quality and my heavy German accent. Um, as so many of you ask about my little backyard scene and how I approach this with Unity, I wanted to go over some um, some little features or workflows how I um, how I did the terrain part of it. So as you can see here, basically the um, the base of it all is uh, just a handmade mesh, which I export from a 3D program and import it to Unity as a default standard mesh. Um, I wanted to try out a new workflow to not um, have the Unity terrain in my scene in general because the disadvantage of Unity terrains are that the mesh terrain basically gets rebuilt um, every frame more or less and that uh, impacts heavily uh, it, it's a heavily heavy um, performance impact of all um, the advantage of using a terrain mesh or a default terrain uh, workflow is that you can easily modify your terrain at all times while working on the scene. But on the other hand, it's limited because they are based on height maps. You don't get to make overhangs and um, yeah, you're more limited in what you can do with a default terrain mesh compared to a handmade um, uh, mesh terrain like this one. So that was the core idea of, of uh, approaching the scene overall. Um, going from here, I'm using a free vertex painter uh, by Jason, Jason Booth, the um, developer of Microsplat. And that comes with a nice shader. Um, it's basically a, a height blended split map shader supporting um, parallax mapping. Um, default, I got just the, the base albedo and the marble on, on this. That's basically the first layer. Um, and now we get to with with a tool that Jason um, provides, we are we get to edit um, these uh, uh, the the mesh um, the vertices of the mesh. Um, let me see. You can push the mesh like you would on a terrain. You can even um, deform things, etc. Which is pretty handy. Uh, it has some minor issues that I still didn't figure out, but that gives us the opportunity to adjust our mesh to fit our needs in inside Unity, like. Uh, or comparable to to what you would have with uh, with using a mesh terrain. That's pretty handy. In addition to that, we can paint the splat maps of the of this and should be. I always forget which colors are what. And I'm not happy, happy, happy with the size of uh, the size settings of of my um, of the brushes here. So you can already see that I'm able to 
paint the splat map of the uh, of the texture. So basically, the, what it's doing is it's modifying the vertex colors of the mesh, and the shader picks up which color is uh, which vertex color is present um, at a certain point, and from there uh, it blends. Um, it blends the different textures based on the height map of the texture. So the normal, no, the uh, um, albedo texture looks like this, and it contains the height map in its alpha channel. So everything that's bright. Uh, gets pushed out in the parallax shader, and everything that's dark gets uh, shown black. It's like a norm, uh, like a default bump map, uh, basically, what, regarding the uh, parallax shader. But it also gets used to blend between two materials, as you can see here. So let's get back. I'm really not used to working with a single screen setup and I'm especially not used to talk while I'm working but sorry if this seems a little unprofessional or all So green was the grass. This are oh, the those are the leaves. I got four layers right now. In this, there's even a five layer setup or different shaders that come with a with this little free tool. I I will link it uh, in the video description later. Here you can also see nicely the height blend between the leaves and the dirt dirt ground. Oh yeah. So it's, this is very similar as you would be working with the um, default Unity terrain. You just paint your textures. And splats. For the overhangs, I have some add in, um, add in geometry. <coughs> Let me see. I'm using a nature manufacturer asset pack. I can link that as well. Um, Doesn't seem to be the right one, but you will get the idea. Let's just quickly erase the slider here. I 
It looks weird because of the shader that's not probably it's probably not required right now. And let's see which one I use there. I modified everything for the for this scene or for the original scene. Uh, to find the right one. Oh, I'm talking to myself now. Yeah, isolation makes things weird. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm I'm adjusting and uh, brightness. It's not fully. It's not exactly right. Right. Um, but you get the idea. How this was made. Adding some add-ins there and just um, scattering around. The shader of of this is pretty clear forward as well. It's a um, C-Planar mapped data blend by a mask. So the base of the um, the roots that are sticking out here, it's just a plain default mapping. And then there is a black and white mask basically mapping all those areas where there should be a transition to another material. And um, that material is um, three planar mapped in world space, so that's why it's moving like that. Well, and then what I did, I went back to the um, to the ground, and I just did what I showed before. I used the deform deformation of this and uh, pushed out this part and. Painted the fitting uh, material to connect those things together. So more or less, you know, quick summary. Um, now for the grass, of all, um, so many people ask about how I did the grass thing. Um, First of all, I wanted to spawn the grass on the surface, and um, that's a little bit difficult here uh, because we don't have a actual terrain. Actual terrain. So I used a small um, script that converts a three D object into a terrain, and. That's a little bit tricky to get right. Let me see. So, first of all, you got to select the meshes you want to be converted into a terrain. And then you just use this object to terrain tool. Click on terrain, uh, create terrain, and what it does is it projects. Um, projects from a camera or from from a view from a top down view or bottom up view um, to the mesh 
and creates a height map and uh, generates the, uh, the terrain from that. So here we have our terrain. Um, there's a little issue with that. Um, if you want to save the scene, the data basically was only saved in the scene and you can just export the height map as a raw image of this terrain and create a new terrain that's fitting those values and re-import the raw image or the raw height map to save it properly, probably as um, as a default Unity terrain, um, because right now this terrain only exists within this scene. It will not be persistent. Then um, I have to align the uh, terrain to my actually actual project uh, um, source, so it overlaps correctly. Let's make that not static to because we don't need the right maps there. I have to offset it a little. So now we have a unity train matching our mesh train. And with this, I can add a new detail mesh. And I used um, the major manufacturer asset here as well. I just use a grass model. Let us find something. Which one did I use? Oh, something like this. Yeah, this looks right. Oops. Um, and now we just paint our tracks to this if this works. Tell me why that is probably because our ground floor is in the way. second so let's continue um, I figure out that the mesh I was using had um, an integrated LEDs and I had to pick the right LED settings here so not the main mesh but one of the LEDs LED meshes to spawn the grass correctly so this way, I'm just drawing the, the grass as you would on a standard uh, Unity terrain as well. And it will be aligned fine with our um, mesh terrain. And you still have all the advantages you get from the uh, standard Unity terrain tools, like spawning, etc. In the settings of the terrain, you can uh, disable the drawing of the terrain. So the terrain is there, but it's not rendered, and we still can use it to distribute our grass and yeah, little rocks or whatever you want to put in there. So it's just really, really pretty. Um, playing around with the density also helps to have it a little bit more natural distribution. Um, 
especially because the terrain is really really small it's just like 50 meters it's really tiny that area so the density values and everything could be tuned down way way lower um so now that we have placed the grass i'm using advanced terrain grass um, to actually render uh, render the, the, the grass um, i can link that in the in the uh, video description as well so you can see advanced terrain grass that has a few really cool features um, which uh, um, regarding the rendering performance etc since unity terrain grass normally gets collected in patches that those are batched together and then um, unity will generate um one mesh for each patch and this way only render certain parts of or, or only the little areas of, of uh, the grass and the foliage in, in general um while advanced terrain grass it's more of an instancing shader based uh, uh, solution that uh, doesn't affect uh, this CPU so much because it doesn't regenerate meshes the way Unity does, and you will have less spikes with that, and um, that's why it's it's a really nice little helper tool. Um, the offside with that is that it mostly only renders uh, appear uh, it's visible only during rendering, and therefore. Uh, you have to to uh, make sure that certain settings are set up correctly. Everything you need to know about the um, advanced terrain grass you can read up on the documentation. Um, it seems that it doesn't like so much the changes in the uh, detail density, so I ramped it up to one again. Um, it has its own its own density settings and fake uh, settings etc. So this is basically how this looks. Um, yeah, let me see if I can move the camera around a little bit. I don't have a camera controller right now attached to this scene. I'm using Amplify Occlusion, um, which is uh, free now. It's open source. And I'm using Content Shadow to get a little bit more detail on the grass. Yeah, well, that's basically the workflow for the terrain thing. I did the backyard scene. You can check it out at HIO, uh, it's free. And it's a little demo scene where you can walk your dog and you play catch. Yeah, hope this helped um, some of you guys and thanks for watching. Bye bye. Come here. Hey, boy.
Good dog. Good boy. 